place in the history of Irish football. It said the very first game of organised football in the country was played in the town, with two teams of visiting Scottish sailors putting on an exhibition for locals. Despite this, senior football passed the town by when the Irish League was formed in 1890. It was almost exclusively a Belfast League. By 1927, the Irish League had expanded and an application was submitted to enter a Coleraine team for the 1927-28 campaign. The application was successful and soon after the Coleraine Showgrounds was secured as a stadium. At the end of that first season Coleraine finished 6th in the league table with 12 wins, 3 draws and 11 defeats from their 26 games. The 1931-32 season saw the club improve its league position to finish fourth, but the undoubted highlight came on the 9th of December when they defeated rivals Ballymena 3-0 at Solitude to lift the Gold Cup in front of an estimated 10,000 fans. This was the club's first ever senior trophy. Throughout the years, there were many more trophies to come, with the Bandsiders winning the Irish League, the League Cup, four Gold Cups, eight Ulster Cups, two All-Ireland Cups, 22 North West Cups, and six Irish Cups, among other less significant honours. The last of these trophies came back to the showgrounds in 2018 as Oren Kearney led his side to Irish Cup success. In the following season, Kearney packed his bags and headed to a full-time role at St Mirren, a move which sent shockwaves through the club. Uh, I think I heard everyone at the club and it was it was a culture shock to a lot of people. Um, Warren was the person that, that brought me through at the club. Um, I was only 17, they showed a lot of faith in me. The Bandsiders endured a rough season under Rodney McAree, drawing their first four games and losing three of their next five. But their form improved at the beginning of 2019 with wins over Cliftonville, Ards and Dungan. Coleraine finished sixth in the league that year and in McAree's final game in charge, the Bandsiders allowed a 3-1 lead to slip against Cliftonville in their Europa League playoff semi-final. This was seemingly the last straw for the board and Macquarie left the club soon after. It was a tough, it was a tough year there that 18-19. There was a wee, a wee couple of games when Oren left and you know the, the coaches sort of took over and, and we maybe didn't get didn't get a couple of months straight away, which you know, left people sort of up in the air. And then whenever the new manager came on, we, you know, we didn't change too much. And then we did change stuff, and it was sort of, you know, we were just sort of up and down. We were a bit inconsistent, so it was, it was a disappointing season there. The club were managerless for the beginning of pre-season. It was the beginning of July 2019 when it was announced that Oren Kearney would be making his return to Coleraine. I think when everyone heard that Oren was coming home, or even when there was a chance of, like, there was talk of him coming home, I think it just left at the mood, and then eventually when it was announced, it, you could just see it, even in the first session back in pre-season, everyone had a spring in their step. I like Rodney. Rodney was alright, and I don't know, maybe he could have got more time or everything else, but Oren's Oren, and yeah. everybody buys into what Oren loves, and me personally, I'm friendly with Oren off the pitch as much as I'm on the pitch, he's the boss and everything else, but as man management, I've always said it to everybody before, um, what Oren does to each player differently is it makes Oren special, you know. It was sort of him and Ham, and he was taking us out and done a really good pre-season and we were knuckling down really well and then when we knew when Oren was coming back it was just a bit of a, a, bit of a just take it in and we all know what, how good he was the last time he was here before he, when he came back and I just, I said, I don't know, it was just one's aura about the club's brilliant and that's what you want back in the club like. I, everybody says I'm probably I'm probably playing the best I've played ever. Um, and I, I probably tend to agree, yeah. Um, again it's it's Oren, it's what how Oren gets you up for games and how Oren how Oren tells you how he, how he wants you to play and if you play and you do what he asks you to do you'll not be far away and that's what I that's what I try to do and it's paying off for me so far. Oren was quick to settle into his new surroundings and get straight to work. 
he made a smooth transition back to life in the Irish League. You know, I probably was very fortunate to, by all accounts. I think Corian had another manager agreed and, and, and couldn't uh, make a deal with that club to <coughs> to get that manager out of that club. So um, I was quite fortunate. So it was in that way that I could I could return to the job um, that I'd left. And, and I, as you know, in football it rarely happens, and it, and it can be hard to do. So um, from that point of view, it's, it's probably been an easier transition because a lot of the um, personnel and people and structures around the place are all quite similar. So it makes it uh, a smooth transition. Oren's arrival galvanised the squad and created a great mood in and around the club. With key players returning from injury and new striker Emmett McGuckin among the ranks, it was full steam ahead to prepare for the new season. Lyndon Kane, Aaron Trainer, and Stephen Lowry were all back in training and working towards getting back to full fitness. To be fair to the lads, you know, the ones who've been here with me before, you know, they, they had the ground running straight away and, and even, you know, the players who, who, who I hadn't brought to the club, um, they all, you know, they all bought into ideally what you were trying to do and it's, it's been a real good effort by everybody. The start to the season was set to be very tough, with the opening three fixtures being at home to Cliftonville, away to Glen Torren and away to Champions Linfield, all in the space of a week. Cole Rain had been written off from the very beginning by the media, so it was important for Kearney's side to get off to a strong start despite their challenging opening fixtures. Everyone outside of the club, outside our squad, had expected us to finish in the bottom six. You know, I think even right up until August, um, we were being tapped to finish eighth. You know, teams like Glenavon and Balmina were tapped to finish above us. And, you know, for, for us, we felt that it was a personal motivation that they go and prove people wrong. The squad were given a boost in the lead up to the campaign opener, with fan favourite fullback Lyndon Kane set to be fit for the clash with Cliftonville. Lyndon's career had been plagued by his metatarsal, which he had broken three times, and he missed the majority of the previous season due to his injury. I was speaking to James actually earlier on. This has been my first effectively full pre season actually since I've joined the club, so that's five years. Um, through injury and suspension, um, and I missed the first preseason because I joined the team in October. So um, it's been it's been brilliant. Um, we're all we're all buzzing, looking forward to the new season. I think when you're in the off season, you're just you're just always chomping at the bit to get back at it. So no, definitely looking forward to it. Long term injuries are extremely difficult for players, both physically and mentally, and for Lyndon, it was no different. The three injuries were really, really difficult. I think the first one, I didn't really know what to expect, so it probably hit me the, the hardest, to be honest. I'd never had a serious injury before like that. Um, so it was very, very tough to take, and it was just, I didn't ever know when I was getting back. And, and the first one, I had two operations. The first one was unsuccessful, and I took an infection. And then the second one was to get the screw removed and stuff as well. But I have went through a lot of tough times, they now get the good times, like the way we've been performing in the league and cup finals and things like that, and that's the things you miss. Also, the people around me were a massive help to me. I think if I didn't have, have them, and I would probably probably not be playing football anymore. I'd have probably just packed it in and, and not tried it, but I had a lot of people behind me, driving me forward and willing me on and, and giving me loads of good advice, and, and that definitely helped me. After his hard work throughout pre-season, Kearney had rewarded Lyndon with a place in the starting 11 and he walked out with the team for the clash with the Reds. The game was a tight affair, with Owen Bradley opening the scoring just past the arm mark. But a slip from McConaughey in the 89th minute gave Cliftonville an opening and Joe Gormley calmly slotted home the equaliser. I think for 89, 90 minutes we were, we were brilliant and you know it was just that probably one mistake at the end that, that led them on and they scored. And, and we deserved to win that. If we had it started with that one, um, you know, I think it would have, it would have, we obviously would have two more points, but it would have given us an extra wee boost. With the heartbreak of a last minute equaliser behind them, the squad prepared to travel to the Oval. It was a hard fought game, but the bandsiders hit form and found themselves 2 0 up with a little under half an hour to go. Then, disaster struck. A red card for James McLaughlin put Corian under the cosh and allowed for a late second half fight back from the Glens.
The game ended 2 all. another disappointing result given the circumstances. Kearney has his team well drilled. Full focus on the next game is what he expects from his players. They have to forget about past results and put future games to the back of their minds. Naturally, going to Windsor Park to face the champions on the third game of the season, they did exactly that. Press and fans alike were expecting Linfield to steamroll Corian after their impressive Europa League campaign. Corian had other plans. Ben Doherty silenced Windsor Park after just 14 seconds. An own goal from Linfield's McGivern and a fine header from captain Stephen O'Donnell put the bandsiders in a comfortable position. It looked as if history was repeating itself when Linfield got two goals back. But a last gasp goal from new boy Emmett McGuckin sealed the first win of the season. I think it could have been one way or the other. We could have been panicking and, and got beat, and then it would have been three games, no one. Whereas we flipped it in its head and, and we won, and, and it was you know, three games unbeaten and started a wee money run. And, and it was a good the start of the season, I think everybody needed, I think the club needed, and, and for us as a squad, it was brilliant. I think it was a massive sense of relief. Um, they went at Windsor, obviously, in the third game. I think we got them at a very good time. Um, they were just off the back of a lot of European games and stuff at that time. but. That's not taken away from our performance that day. I thought we were excellent. Um, we were well worthy of it. And Windsor's a place that, that we love to go to as a team. It suits us down to the ground. Um, it's a great place to play on and stuff. Um, great place to go for any player. It's obviously the best ground in the country. Um, so it's somewhere where if you can't play football at Windsor, you shouldn't really be playing. And um, no, we definitely deserve it for that day. The rest of August saw the Bandsiders suffer a nil-all home stalemate against Institute and grab a convincing 4-0 away victory at Glenavon. In between those fixtures, Corian got their League Cup campaign off to a strong start with a 4-0 home win over intermediate team Anna United. The end of August also saw Kearney further strengthen the squad with three new signings. Institute pair Aaron Jarvis and Martin Gallagher switched the Brandywell for the showgrounds and young forward Nedas Machiladis arrived from Anna. September started strong for Corian with a 5-0 win over Dungannon at the showgrounds. Then it was time for the first meeting with arch-rivals Balamina. Corian travelled up in their numbers and took the lead through James McLaughlin. Korean captain Stephen O'Donnell was sent off for a high boot in 37 minutes. And Balamina equalised through Scott Whiteside on the stroke of half time. The game finished one apiece, with Adam Mullen also getting sent off for Korean. The biggest disappointment was probably Balamina away. Uh, I think we drew. We drew draw one each, and um, where I was sent off, uh, and that sort of led to me getting injured in the sense that he had sent off, done an extra couple of sessions, tried to do a double session on the Tuesday, and I got injured in training on the Tuesday night. So, um, you know, the repercussions of getting sent off that day is probably interrupted my season. I got in the way of, of three months of football, you know what I mean? So, it's probably the biggest disappointment for me. There was no time to rest, as the next week there was a massive clash at the top of the table with Crusaders. The game started with a bang when ex Korean forward Jamie McGonagall opened the scoring in three minutes. Ben Doherty got the bandsiders back on level terms just seven minutes later. In the end, the bandsiders ran out comfortable 4 2 winners, a massive win for the club. Like McGonagall, Jamie Glacken was on the score sheet against his old club. The goal was a confidence booster for Glacken and set him up for a run of good form. Getting the goal against Cruz here beat them 4-2, 4-2 wasn't it? Yeah. They get the goal um, 
there sort of enhanced me to sort of step on and sort of take it, let my shoulders down and just relax and just play the football that I can play. Mm -hmm. Everything stands in the confidence. If you're confident then you're only from a personal point of view, once I'm confident I'm once I'm confident and happy and Every, all the shackles come off and I'm just, I'm just myself and my free for myself. The game also saw Aaron Trainer make an appearance in the first team after spending 351 days out with an ACL injury. Oh, I was brilliant feeling. Um, so tough. I, I, I actually struggled like, initially with it, with the injury. And uh, my reason, everything fell in my place. Adam Mullen sent off and Stevie O'Donnell sent off with a bombing in. Or came to me and I was probably about 90% ready, if you know what I mean. I wasn't just quite ready and he said, listen, you can play, but uh, or as other people are going to do the job, it's up to you. And I thought I would take the gamble and come back in and, and he played me and ever since I've, I've played nearly enough every game, yeah. so happy enough. The month of September ended with a hotly contested nil-all draw at home against a strong Larne side. October started with an away trip to Carrick Rangers and with captain Stephen O'Donnell out of the lineup. The responsibility fell on the shoulders of boyhood Coleraine fan Lyndon Kane to lead the team out. Well, it was a dream come true um, and it just takes me back to the day that I made my debut for the club and that was a dream come true as well. It's something I've always won at, at my day and in regards to my debut, it's something I always wanted to do, I wanted to play for the club. I live two minutes up the road and it's always something that I wanted to do and, and that day when Orrin came around the change room and said that I was captain, it was, I couldn't believe it. I'd, I didn't know if I'd heard him right, to be honest. Um, but being able to walk the team out that day was was special, and uh, I feel it's helped me a lot as a person and as a player. I feel like I've grew up a little bit more and, and a bit more maturity within my game and stuff. And um, I'm forever grateful to Warren for for giving me the chance. I think he's been exceptional, and again, you, you, I suppose you don't hand that. Our man over lightly, and, um, and and there's a lot of responsibility in it. And I think Lyndon has grown. He's he's emerged probably as as a real young leader amongst the pack, and someone that a lot of the other players have a lot of time and respect for. So um, I think he was a real suitable candidate to take that armor. He's done well, uh, and what's good about Lyndon, um, what's good about having Lyndon is that Lyndon loves Corinne. You know, so I know. Um, I know that when I'm not playing, if London's at the armband, it's given to someone who, who appreciates it as much as I do and who, um, who only wants to do well for the club. And when you get it at the start, there's that wee bit of pressure the first couple of games that you have to play through and um, play on, but he's done well. And, and hopefully, you know, any time I'm not playing, that, you know, if London's sticking it, that's great, but uh, hopefully I'll be playing a bit more in the coming months. The game finished 4-1, with goals from Owen Bradley, Aaron Jarvis, Aaron Trainer, and Akeelan Lochran own goal. Trainer's goal against Carrick was the first Coleraine goal of his career, an added boost after his long spell on the sidelines. Oh, it wasn't a great goal to get like it was about two yards out. I think I stole it off Ben Dapperley. The goal meant a lot to me personally, but listen, it was just a normal on the board and then it got us to win more importantly. Obviously I'm not known for scoring, I'm, I'm more of a defender and I'm just trying to help out that side of things, but to pop up and get that goal it did, it, it sort of gave me that sort of belief where like all that work was, was well worth it and it sort of topped off a good couple of months me coming back in, I think. Colwyn returned from Carrick to face Glen Torn for some Tuesday night football in the third round of the League Cup. There were three goals in 12 minutes, with Jamie Glacken heading home the opener on the R mark, Ben Doherty converting a penalty to double Coleraine's lead, and Glen Torn forward Navid Nazeri pulling one back for the visitors. His efforts were in vain though, as the bandsiders held on and advanced to the next round. After the cup showdown with the Glens, Coleraine walked out 3-0 winners at home to Warren Point and prepared for a top-of-the-table doubleheader against Belfast sides, Crusaders and Linfield. The Crusaders game was a tight affair despite the 2-0 scoreline. Stephen Baxter's men did their best to keep Coleraine at bay, but Ben Doherty stepped up to the plate on two occasions in the game to convert from the spot. The next week, Linfield visited the showgrounds and looked as though they would hold out against Coleraine. In the 83rd minute, this all changed 
when Jamie Glacken whipped a beautiful corner into the six-yard box. Canning ruled away in celebration, while the railway end went ballistic. However, the goal was declared an own goal by Stafford. Regardless, there were no complaints from Coleraine, as they went home the winners of an incredibly tight game. The last game of October came in the League Cup. Coleraine travelled to Dundella for the quarter-final clash. A first-half hat-trick for Ben Doherty set the Bandsiders well on their way to victory. Owen Beggs brought one back for the home team. But late strikes from Alex Gaughan and Josh Carson sealed the victory for the Bandsiders. This result meant that Coleraine had won all six of the games they played in October, scoring 17 and conceding just three. This hot run earned Oren Kearney the league's Manager of the Month award. It's nice to win those awards, you make no bones about it, but um, unless a team are performing out there and, 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 and doing the business, um, you only win them when the players win games. So um, it's, it's easy to take that credit and it's nice to take that credit, but you know I'm only the guy that stands at the front of it. There's a huge amount of hard work that goes on behind the scenes from lots of different people um, connected to the club, uh, and I think awards they got are very much for everybody. With the fans in high spirits because of the on-pitch performances, they were about to get another big boost. A meeting was held in the social club where plans to upgrade the stadium were unveiled to a crowd of over 100. The first change was to be the pitch. The current surface would be replaced with an all-weather 4G pitch, costing between £450 and £480,000. There would also be upgrades to the stands. The shed end would be turned into a 2,000 capacity grandstand. The Jack Doherty grandstand would be expanded and refurbished to meet UEFA standards and safe standing will be introduced. The process is estimated to take three to five years to complete. Back on the pitch, Coleraine picked up in November just how they left off at the end of October, with a brace from Stephen Lowry sealing a 2-0 away victory against Dungannon. The next week, Coleraine beat Glenavon 4-0 at home via a James McLaughlin hat-trick and a Ben Doherty penalty. This extended their run to 18 games unbeaten for the season. Media attention was high on the squad, and there were some outsiders concerned that the Coleraine players might get ahead of themselves. The gaffer is probably the main thing that stops that happening. He will never ever let you get above your station. That's one thing for sure about Owen. He'll never let you get carried away, or never let you think you're better than what you actually are. So that's that's the main thing to it. It would have been easy for us to, to and that on bit room, they, they start saying we're going to win the league and start telling people that we're the best team in the league and whatever it may be. But we have you know, we have a lot of boys who've been there and done it who knows that nothing gets won in, in November. You don't get anything handed in November, or December time. Uh, I think we're on the football long enough to know that you're, you're never going to keep winning forever and, and that it'll come to an end at some point. Cole Rain took the long trip south to Warren Point, looking to extend their unbeaten run. Things weren't quite going to plan for the Bandsiders whenever Alan O'Sullivan scored from the spot in the 47th minute. Jamie Glacken got the Bandsiders back on track just three minutes later, but another goal from O'Sullivan and a late finisher from Chris Cowan sealed a shock win for Warren Point. It was a shock to everyone. Um, but going down to Warren Point was a serious, serious reality check. It was one of the lowest points that I have been in Korea. Um, playing a team that had won one game and, and shipped a lot of goals and, and we went down there and, and they gave us a good, a good go on and they rattled us early doors. The one point gave us the 3-1 game, yeah. um, that was oh, Jesus, a bad weekend that, um, it was actually, we, we had a, I actually had a few mates going out for a night out that night and I just sacked it off, I just, I was, I was, I was out and out, um, I just couldn't wait to choose the game again, just to get in the train and sort of get the legs going again and just forget about that, push that to the side and then once Tuesday came I couldn't wait till the following weekend just, just to get a nor crack at a game like. The Warren Point game created a mini rough patch for Korean. They narrowly scraped past Carrick with a 3-2 win at the showgrounds, all thanks to an Alex Gaughan overhead kick in the 86th minute. The Bandsiders then travelled to the Brandywell, 
where they suffered another shock defeat at the hands of Institute, losing 2-0. You hear about a lot of teams after a defeat where they go into a big massive discussion in the dressing room for an hour after the game and stuff like that and there's a whole inquest into it but I think Oren as a manager it's just you've been beat, you just dust yourself down, you get out of the ground as soon as possible and you talk about it on Tuesday night, everyone goes away, obviously everyone's massively disappointed with the result but you're better not to talk, like, dwell on and talk about it, you can't fix the result. I think. We had to reassess and we went and, and scraped the win the next week against Carrick and then we were beat against the Institute. So that was a rope patch for us and I think we've learned a lot from it now and, and, and it'll stand us in good stead hopefully going forward. Coleraine had hit a rough patch and for their League Cup semi-final against Linfield they once again find themselves travelling up to Windsor Park as massive underdogs. We were going to Windsor Park and there's no better way to bounce back their defeat than, than going and playing obviously like the biggest club in the country. Um, I think it's easy to play in games like that. It's very easy, especially in a in a semi final like cup. Obviously, cup games are they're lottery games. The the Lumfield game probably came at the perfect time. Um, the semi final of the league cup um, at once or where. Um, you know, you just come off a back of two defeats, the two bottom six teams are going to want to park to play on a, you know, on a good patch. You're going to play against a team who's going to come out and, and get at you, and you have no choice. You know, when you go there, they want to park, go we'll play any number team. You're going to stand up and, and face it head on, or you're going to lie down. And we don't have players like that in the dressing room. Colerain battled hard in the first half, and it took every man on the pitch to ensure they went in level at half time. I think it was just pressure. Um, the league at that point were sort of stuttering. Um, people were saying we, we blew up. The second half was a different story. Coleraine came forward and started to press Linfield. In the 62nd minute, the deadlock was broken. Aaron Canning capitalised on a defensive mistake and headed home the opener. Goal for Coleraine, scored by number four, Aaron Canning. With the fans behind them, Coleraine didn't let up. They kept Linfield penned in and scored two more. The first, a deflected effort by Ben Doherty, and the second, a header from Aaron Jarvis. It was probably the perfect game for us, I and mean, then going on the meds and one of the best away performances that, that we've put him under in his time. And I thought that night the boys were brilliant. And um, going out that night was just a, the motivation was just to get the League Cup final. Let's let's go and, and win trophies. And um, and I think you know I think hopefully now and, and next week we can or in the next couple of weeks we can go go on. Well. The fans were behind the team from the word go, and were the driving force that helped the team over the line. I love to play a drum every single game we have. Um, when then boys come out in their numbers and they know who they are, they come out in their numbers, they sing from minute, minute one to minute 95 and it definitely lifts us. I don't think they realise the importance that they have on our team. I don't think they do realise what an important role they play in relation to keeping the players motivated and keeping them going. So, um, you know, we, we think very highly of our fans here and I'm very appreciative of, of everything they do. The next game was at home to Glen Torren, where the Bandsiders found themselves 2-0 down in the first half, but a second half brace from Aaron Jarvis clawed back a deserved point for the Stripes. Another draw was to follow, as the squad travelled to Larne on a bitterly cold day. The game also finished two apiece, with either side looking capable of taking the win. In the last game before Christmas, Coleraine were in need of a win. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get that at Solitude thanks to a late Cliftonville winner from Conor McMenamin. Tensions boiled over between the teams at full time and a brawl ensued. Boxing Day brought another massive game to the showgrounds, with rivals Balamina attempting to capitalise on Coleraine's shaky form. This wasn't to be though, as early goals from Josh Carson and Jamie Glacken secured the three points. Next up, 
up in the busy Christmas schedule came another massive game against Linfield. This one finished one all, with Aaron Canning netting another header against the Blues. The 2020 began with a 2 0 away win over Carrick. An early strike from Aaron Trainer gave him another Korean goal against his old employers. Alex Gaughan also got on the score sheet in the game, adding to his impressive performances off the bench. The start of January also brings along the opening of the transfer window. This saw the arrival of Matthew Fitzpatrick, who signed on a pre-contract agreement from Belfast Celtic in November. He was present for the side's next game, the Irish Cup opener against Glenavon, but wasn't in the match squad. Gorian kicked off proceedings early with a beautiful goal from Jamie Glacken inside 10 minutes. But missed chances kept Glenavon in the game until the 75th minute when Owen Bradley's composed finish sent the bandsiders to the next round. home defeat to next month's cup final opponents Crusaders came next, followed by another trip to Warren Point. This was a potential banana skin for the Stripes, with November's result in the back of their minds. Kearney made sure his men were ready though, with the help of a Jamie Glacken hat-trick and a tidy finish from new signing Fitzpatrick, sent the team home with all three points. Coleraine ended January with a massive three points against title rivals Cliftonville. The game was played in horrible winter conditions and was a tight affair. A piece of magic from Alex Gaughan was the only difference between the sides. January finished with transfer deadline day. The window had been quite quiet for Korean and many fans were left wondering where the new signings were. Luckily for them, Kearney had some last gasp surprises up his sleeve. The first of these was 22-year-old Stuart Nixon. He signed from Carrick Rangers, with Alex Gone going the other way on a six-month loan. There was a lot of late movement at the club and some stress along with it. All the drama was worthwhile when it was announced that Curtis Allen would be returning to the club on an initial loan deal until the end of the campaign. However, the 31-year-old had agreed and signed a further two-year contract, which comes into effect for the start of next season. It can be stressful. Um and again I've experienced it now for a few years but you always hope that, that it'll come in the end and, and it'll sort itself in the end and thankfully um, this window was exactly the same so we're, you know, we're happy with the work that we've got in and, and, and glad to see the window shut. <laughs> now the countdown to the cup final is on. There are just two games left, the first of these a home tie against Bambridge in the sixth round of the Irish Cup. There's so many big games, you don't even get the chance to think about it. And it is in the, in the back of your mind, don't get me wrong, but it seems like with, with the last 16 tie today that we want to obviously go far in this tour. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've got Glen Torn next week, so like you, you can't even look two, three weeks down the line, it's always Saturday. I know it's a cheesy analogy, but it, it generally is this time, we're, we're just taking one game at a time. Cole Rain took care of business, beating Banbridge 3 0 and putting their name in the hat for the next round. Now with only two weeks until the cup final, the excitement is starting to build around the club, but the players remain focused. We thought all week about Banbridge, we'll think this week about Glentorn, and then we'll think about Crusaders. You know, it, you know, we know there's a cup final coming up, but this stage is this stage of it is league, and we're in we're in the mix for the league, so that's equally as important as the cup final. You know, it's it's not. It's not something that's on our minds at the moment. We have a big game against the Glens before that, you know, and I think if you ask any of the boys, um, what's our biggest thing at the moment? It's, you know, the Glens game next week. All our league games at the moment are probably um, cup finals in their own sense that um, every three points is important. So, but we haven't got that far after after the Glens are the way, and, and hopefully with three points, then we can start worrying about it. And we can start, um, you know, start thinking about it and, and getting ourselves organised. But at the moment, 
it's just a small game. No, you just take it week by week, and you know we, we've a we've a huge game next week away to Glentorn, um, which which takes precedent at this point in time. So um, for us, it's about going and making sure that we we can try and take care of that first, and and then when once we get that one put to bed, we, our all eyes will turn to the cup final. And put it to bed, they did. Jamie Glacken scored the only goal of the extremely tight game directly from a corner, with a Storm Kira assist. The adverse weather conditions had strong effects on the game, but thankfully, these worked in Corian's favour, and they collected another massive win on the road. The week of the final is here, and everyone is in high spirits. Last week's win against Glentorn has helped to ease the pressure in the build-up to the biggest game since the Irish Cup final in 2018. Yeah, the boys are in good form and, and, it, and it generally is, to be fair, it's, it's a really good change room and a, lot, and a lot of good people in it, so uh, a lot of upbeat characters and, and, and again, we're sitting in a good place, as you say, there's a cup final coming up, we've, we're, we've learned away now in the Irish Cup quarter final in a month's time um, and we're in a good place in the league as well, so it's an exciting time for everybody and, and it's just about keeping that excitement harnessed and just making sure that we keep producing the work that we need to. Obviously it's been, I think it's been eight weeks now since we qualify for the final. Um, it's been a long wait but we've had a lot of games in between um, but but now that it's here and we're in the build up to it it's I'm delighted like delighted we're in the final and absolutely buzzing for it. But again it's it's another game. It's another game and you can't treat the game as just a massive big hype and could you just distract yourself and put yourself off and everyone's looking forward to it as a town, as a club and players and staff and stuff. Um, and yeah, just can't wait. It's just a it's a long day now on Saturday because the kickoff's at half seven. Um, we're obviously not used to like half seven on Saturday, you're still playing at three o'clock, but um, it'll be a wee bit different, but it's just about how we prepare ourselves now and, and we go on to it. Final of 
the ring cup. There's not a doubt towards the penalty spot. McGonagall! He's put it over the bar. Seven yards out. That was the chance. That's who you wanted at the ball to. And Jimmy McGonagall finds the six behind the goal instead of the back of the net. Oh my goodness. What a glorious, glorious chance. Warren Kearney's looking at his watch, he, then he's trying to jump before the whistle hit. His watch says four minutes have been played. So the referee blows his whistle. His watch says that four additional minutes have been played. And Coleraine's celebrating.